I think Oliver told me that you are already in the chapter of nucleophilic substitution, right? So we, um, we will cover mostly uh, the bimolecular nucleophilic substitution. Okay, so the first, uh, you have already studied the difference between SN1 and SN2, right? So the SN2 is the bimolecular nucleophilic substitution. So why is bimolecular? So any idea? Sorry, can you say it again? You have a molecule? And a nucleus. Okay, nucleophile. yeah. So the thing is, it's bimolecular. So in the SN1, you also have two molecules, right? For example, but it's the NS2 in the slow step of the reaction, you have two molecules involved in this slow step, which determine the kinetic of the reaction. Right? That's the reason why it's called bimolecular. It's not only because you have two molecules. It's because these two molecules are involved in the step, in the slowest step of the reaction, right? So, let's... So in, in a normal SN2, you know that uh, the nucleophile, we will see later different type of nucleophile, but it's in normal SN2, uh, the nucleophile attack in the backside of the living group, right? So you know that, right? Okay, so then basically what you will have is a transition state Like this, okay? So now, this is about 180 degrees. So why is that? Any idea? Why is this attacking in this, with this kind of angle here, kind of a linear? So it's, it's mostly a plan, right? So what is, uh, what is the reason? Yeah. This is the angle where the steric repulsion is minimal. Yeah, and indeed, actually, the overlap between the long pair of electron and the antibonding sigma orbital here is maximized, okay, because of that reason. That is the, the reason why you have this linear attack. And now, what is the, the character of this carbon here? This is sp3, right? So in this case here, you have pretty much now an sp2, okay? So And in the final product, you have a, again the sp3. So this reaction is a stereospecific. So the stereochemistry of the reaction actually go with inversion. So if the substrate at the beginning is chiral, then the final product actually has undergo an inversion of the configuration, right? And that is because the nucleophile attacking the backside of the living group. So is that clear? So here you have the living group, the alloy, for example. 
And in this case, uh, you may think why this reaction is not reversible, because this could also go back, right? So why is that? Any idea why this reaction is irreversible? Any idea? Yeah? So this is a very bad living group, right? And also, if you look at in the in an energetic diagram, for example, so the transition state will be here. If this is energy, this is the product, and he, sorry, this is the this is the reactant here, and this will be the product. So the activation energy now is much higher to go back. Okay. In addition, this uh, O8 is a very bad nucleophile, a very bad living group. Okay. So, uh, of course, you have seen already that the nucleophile can either be, uh, for example, a char nucleophile like this one, but can also be a, a neutral nucleophile. Okay. So basically, if you use a neutral nucleophile, you can get uh, a salt as a final product. And in the case of a chair nucleophile, you can get the neutral product like this one. So, um, so we say that this, uh, this reaction, the SN2, mainly is a stereo, uh, so it's occurred with inversion of the configuration. But that is not always the case. There is some cases, some specific cases, where the configuration actually is retained. So the, the, the reaction progress with uh, retention of the configuration. We will, we will see that also later. Um, now, there is a, have you studied already the kinetics of this reaction? So you know that the ray of this reaction, depending of the concentration of both the nucleophile and the concentration of the react, right? So which are the factors that you think can influence the rate of the reaction? For example, some factor? So do you think that the solvent could influence the rate? Yes or no? No? Anybody think that yes? So the solvent can influence, indeed, the rate of the reaction. Because if you can imagine, if you have a, for example, iodine, and then you have a solvent, like for example, methanol. This solvent can now surround all the anions. Okay, and by hydrogen bonding, they can actually coordinate to the nucleophile and make more difficult for him to attack the, 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 the starting material. Right, so the solvent has a strong influence. Uh, indeed, there is not only the solvent, but of course the nature of the substrate. Right, so if the substrate is very bulky, then of course the reaction will be more difficult as a SN2 mechanics, right? Because you need, uh, you need the nucleophile attacking in the backside of the living group. So substrate, solvent, and what else can have an influence? Anything else? Any idea? So there is another thing that can have an, an important influence here. Yeah, exactly, the living group. So the, best, the better the living group, the faster the SN2 reaction will be, right? So if you are, for example, if, if you're the living group, if you think about a reaction in which this will be the living group, of course this reaction will not take place because this is a very bad living group. But any allogens, for example, that are very good living groups, that make the reaction uh, go faster. 
Okay, so then in general, the SN2 goes well with uh, the polar aprotic solvent, okay, but not with the polar protic solvent like the methanol. So the best solvent for, for this reaction are solvent like THF or diethyl ether, for example. These are the best solvent, and solvent like protic polar, methanol, for that reason, these are very bad solvent for the SN2 reaction. That clear? Okay, so, um, so in the, you know that if you already study the SN1 reaction, you know that in this case, the SN2 occur everything in one step. So the attacking of the nucleophile and the expelling of the living group occur all in one step, right? That's the difference with the SN, SN1 reaction, which you generate first the carbocation, and then you attack, the, this, this cation is attacked by the nucleophile, right? In this case, all occur in one step. So, um, so as I say, the, there, is a, there is a possibility that the stereochemistry of this reaction occur with retention. So, any idea? You? Any idea how this can go with retention? How can you? Using just SN2 reaction, how can you make a product in with the stereochemistry at the end? Only the stereochemistry is the same by using only SN2 reaction. So if you use, for example, two SN2 reaction, one after the other, you will get retention, right? Because the first SN2 reaction will occur with inversion and the second SN2 reaction will occur also with inversion. So at the end, you will still keep the same stereochemistry, right? That clear? So let's put an example here. So, for example, in this case, you make the SN2, the first SN2 here, that occur with inversion, the configuration, but then you still have another living group here, right, that can be attacked by, uh, expelled by another nucleophile. So if you use, for example, a tile, which is a strong nucleophile, then you can do another SN2 reaction that also occur with inversion, and therefore, at the end, the stereochemistry of this center and the stereochemistry at the center at the beginning are the same, right? So two subsequent SN2 reactions give you the same configuration in the carbon that is attacked, right? So uh, there is another possibility similar to this example in which you can keep the stereochemistry of the reaction, but in that case, you can, rather than using two different nucleophiles, you can use a solvent, which is also a nucleophile. So, uh, for example, let me just... So, there is something which is called, have you seen this already? No, right? So this is a very specific case within the SN2 reaction, which is normally called the abnormal substitution reaction. And this is abnormal because also occurs with retention. Remember that, that we say that most of the reaction with SN2 occur with inversion, but there is a couple of examples, like the one we saw now, but also this one, that occur with global retention of the configuration. So in this case, uh, you have, for example, the typical example of this is the 
chlorination of alcohol. So, um, what is this? What is this chemical? <coughs> Any idea? Have you, have you seen this before? Yes? So what is this one? Thionyl chloride, right? Okay. So, so the first things that happen here Well, this is not exactly true, but this is, this is the first thing that happened is the attack of the alcohol to the thionic chloride, and this actually is uh, uh, stay as an intimate ion pair, right? Now, if for this reaction you are using a solvent like dioxane, so, uh, this solvent is also a nucleophile, okay? So that means that this solvent can also interact with this product. And in that case, you will generate this oxonium. Okay, so this is also an SN2. So basically, this attack now, this as a living group with this uh, part of the molecule here. Okay, so you will have something like this, which actually develop to urate SF2 so sulfur dioxide and chloride. Okay, so in the first step, the solvent is involved as well. And now you have an inversion of the configuration here. Okay, so in the second step now, you have the chloride, okay, that now attack again the electrophilic carbon. And this is also an SN2. So it's like the previous case. So now, Again, this occurs with inversion, so the final product gives you give you a retention of the configuration in this carbon. Okay, so there is two possibility to only work with SN2 reaction that can lead you to a final product with the same stereochemistry like the beginning. So one is using two different nucleophiles, and the first one giving a better, uh, also a good living group. So the second nucleophile also act in the SN2 reaction, giving a total retention of the configuration. And the other possibility is to use a nucleophilic uh, solvent like the dioxan, which is the classical example uh, in which you can just using the solvent obtain an overall retention of the configuration. Sorry? Uh, yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> Thank you. So that is the, the other example. So the difference the different between the SN1 reaction and the SN E reaction that you see here, so is that in this case, this is not complete, it's not exactly dissociated. So in the SN1 reaction, you have the cation, right? It's completely separate. But in this case, this is all kind of what is called an intimate pair ion. So it's not exactly uh, separate like the SN1 reaction. So that's the major difference here. So, um, so is, is this the same class like uh, we will have on Friday? 
Okay, so then I can split the, all the information on this too. Um, so, have you studied the So there is some, some important concept in this nucleophilic substitution. I don't know if you have seen this already, but I don't think so. This is the neighboring group participation. Have you studied that? OK. So this is an important uh, part of this nucleophilic substitution in which so the neighboring group participation, so the definition is just the, the, the interaction of a reactive center with the electron of uh, any ion atom that you may have in your molecule. So just that interaction uh, could actually have an effect in the, in the kinetic of the reaction. Usually when you have this type of effect that we will see now, the reaction rate increase. So that is important. Uh, and also this can affect the stereochemistry of the reaction as well. So when you have a molecule and you are trying to figure out what is happening in the presence of another molecule, you have to think whether you could have such an effect in your molecule or not. Because if you over underestimate that you can have this group participation, then you may be wrong in what is the final product. Okay, so for example, there is a, a, a classical example which is this sulfur or nitrogen muster. So have you heard about these molecules? So have you heard about the muster gas to kill people? Have you heard about that, right? So this muster gas is actually this type of molecule. So that contain an heteroatom like sulfur or nitrogen and alloyin like this. So what happened is that when you have this heteroatom here, can act as an internal nucleophile. <coughs> and this can form So if you form now this three memory ring, the reaction in the presence of a nucleophile is much faster than if you don't have this heteroatom here. So actually, there is this, this is a, one example of this neighboring group participation. So the sulfur is now the neighboring group that participate in the displacement of the living group, okay, by forming this intermediate which is highly reactive. And this can also be formed with other sites, like five or six member, four and five member mostly. Uh, so why this mustard gas is so cytotoxic? It's because of this reason. So usually this is a, a compound that is uh, very uh, typical, and this actually form also this phonium. And now this uh, can react with the Na2 groups of the DNA. Okay, so if you have a DNA strain, this can now be the nucleophile. And this is now alkylated by having this molecule. Okay, so that is the reason why the mustard gas is so toxic. And this is, normally this mustard compound are not very water soluble, but they are lipid soluble. So they can dissolve in fat, and they can absorb in, in the skin very easy. Okay, so that is the reason why this mustard gas is so toxic. So this neighboring group participation is, a, a, is something that you have to consider when, when you want to see if a SN2 process in a mechanism or in a different mechanism. So if you have this heteroatom close to the living group, you have to think about this possibility, okay? And if you remove this, the reaction rate decreases a lot comparing to this example. 
So there is another example, which is mostly in the literature of carbohydrate, uh, which is the same thing, and is called uh, the anchimeric assistant. But it's actually is a neighboring group participation as well. So in that case, you have, uh, let's say, carbohydrate. So for example, if you have this uh, glycosyl uh, allogen here, uh, you can form this glycoside by reaction with methanol in the presence of some silver salt. Uh, this is uh, happening with this stereochemistry due to the presence of this group here. So my question is, anybody has any idea how, so how could we see a neighboring group participation here? So I give you a tip in which is this group here in the C2, the carbon number two, which is involved in the neighboring group participation. So how, how can be this involved in this reaction? Any idea? So in an elimination process, so kind of. So we so if you have a coordination, that's the reason why you use this metal here. You will see that more in detail when you study carbohydrate chemistry. This is an activator, okay, that coordinates to the living group here. Basically what's happening is you generate an oxonium ion here, right? So this, so this is what you generate here, right? And this, of course, is now can be in equilibrium, actually in a resonance form with this one. So now what's happening is this group here, the one that can be connected to this carbocation, right? So it's pretty much similar to what you see in this example. But in this case, you have now the acetate group here. Okay, so if you if you uh, react this group with this carbocation here, you generate now a cycle, right? A cyclic compound, right? You see that? So you generate this one, right? Is that clear? You don't see that this so can form this by attacking the acetate here? Yes. So now, what happens when you have this here? So this, now if you have the attack of the nucleophile, to ring opening again and leave the acetate group, this nucleophile cannot attack by this side now, okay? Because now this cyclic here is blocking the bottom side 
of the carbohydrate. So the nucleophile has no any other choice than attacking by this position here, okay? So this is a typical example of neighboring group participation in carbohydrate. So if, and this is important to have an acetate here because imagine that you don't have an acetate but you have an ether group. Like for example, rather than this one, you have a benzyl group like this. So this is a phenyl group. This one cannot form this cycle here, <coughs> okay? So then what normally happens in the chemistry of carbohydrate is that you don't get, in this case, you get the beta glycoside, which is this, this position here. And in this case, you get a mixture of alpha and beta. And by the anomeric effect that that will be also studied later, you normally, with this type of uh, group here, you get only the alpha glycoside, or mostly. But to get the beta, it's almost exclusively, you need to have this uh, uh, neighboring group that can participate in the assistance of the nucleophilic attack. Okay? So, so what actually this is the key intermediate, right? The one that you have to remember. So this is what we have discussed in this uh, NGP, is the, the possible formation of any cycle before the attack of the nucleophile. Okay, if that is not possible, then there is no possible NGP effect. But if that is possible, can alter, as you see in this example, for example, the stereochemistry of the reaction. So it's very important to realize that this can happen or not in your molecule. So, uh, there is, this is the S N uh, ear reaction that uh, we study as a specific case of the SN2 with process with a retention of the configuration. There is another possible complication in this reaction which is uh, uh, called the SN2 prime reaction. Okay, so this reaction um, occur mostly in allylic substrate. So when you have an allylic uh, uh, compound. So I put you an example here. So if you just keep in mind the SN2 reaction, you may think, okay, if I have now a nucleophile, and this is the living group, then the nucleophile can attack in this carbon, on the opposite side of the living group, and give you the standard uh, uh, SN2 product, right? But there is another uh, important possibility here, which is, uh, do you see another, another part of this molecule where the nucleophile can attack? So is there another electrophile center here? So in which other position of this molecule could attack this nucleophile? It's the double bond, right? So at the double bond, this part of the molecule here is pretty much in the plane, right? So this is planar. Now, the nucleophile can either attack, for example, here, or by the bottom part of the molecule. And if that happens, then what you, what you will have is a rearrangement of the allylic compound. So this attack here, the living group is here, to expel the living group, the double bond, once you attack the nucleophile, the level, the the electron of the double bond will come here, and then the living group will go out, which means that the product that you will get is now another one 
in which the position of the double bond has changed. Of course, if you don't have any substitution in this carbon here, you will not see any difference between this molecule and the molecule at the beginning because these are symmetrical. But if you have any substitution in this group, then you will see that the group, the, the product are indeed uh, different. Right? So the, the position of the double bond change here. So this complication with the allylic system is what you have to keep in mind. So the SN2 is not so clear when you have allylic system. Okay? So, uh, for example, also the, 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 there is some a number of factors that can make that the reaction goes mostly with these mechanisms or can go by a simple SN2 reaction. For example, if you use a very bulky nucleophile, uh, a very big nucleophile, in this allylic system, normally the reaction tends to occur in this, in this double bond and not directly on the, on the more bulky environment of the living group. So if, you, if you, somebody put you, for example, terbutoxide as a base and as a nucleophile, uh, that nucleophile is very bulky, so the attack here is more difficult than the attack in this carbon. So in that case, this is the preferred mechanism. Is that clear? Okay. So uh, now between this... Uh, Half an hour and, 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 the, and the other, uh, and the next day we will see mainly uh, different, um, different type of reaction in which we involve different uh, nucleophile. So I guess with uh, uh, Professor Rice, you have already studied the different nucleophile, you have studied the acidity, the basicity. Uh, you have studied the competency between the SN1 and the SN2 reaction. So I, I guess you have studied all that, right? So I guess this, this concept will be very easy for you. Um, what, are the, what are the different type of nucleophile that you can think about? So for example, tell me some example of nucleophiles. So we have seen already some of them, right? So, for example, where we have this one, it's a nucleophile, right? So, which other nucleophile do you do you do you know? Huh? Can no hear. So, any nucleophile? Some amine groups, right? Some amine groups can also be nucleophile. Some what else? Any idea? This is the only nucleophile that you can think about? Yes. <laughs> OK, then we will see now uh, different reaction where you can, uh, uh, you can work with other type of nucleophile. But before that, I think we can also do uh, And this does not work very well. Yeah, as you see, this is quite a different system that we have in <laughs> quite sophisticated system. As you see, you are not the only one that learns things, right? Okay, so. Okay. 
So uh, before we see these reactions, uh, maybe we can discuss some, um, some very easy exercise and see if you can uh, maybe uh, have a better idea of the difference between this, uh, uh, this type of nucleophilic reaction. So you have studied the SN1 reaction, the SN2 reaction. That means that you can have uh, a very good idea about the, the, the molecule that can be polarized, uh, the molecule that the acidity or basicity of the different molecules. So if you take this carbon chloride uh, bone, so which of these uh, do you think represent this, this corresponds to the partial char in these two atoms here. So a positive, negative, negative, positive, 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 negative, negative, or just this ion here. So which one? So how many of you think that, or which of these do you think is the best representation for this molecule? So any, you can vote. So this one, negative, negative? No, right? So this one, any idea which one do you think is, is the most, the, 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 the better to, to represent this bone? This one? Yes. So are you agree? Yes? Yes. Correct, that one. So, of course, I know this sounds very elemental, but uh, you have to get these things clear if you're studying nucleophilic substitution and so on, right? So, uh, So what is the product of this reaction? So you have this uh, uh, alkyl halogen here, treated with a nucleophile. In this case, this is the solvent, and it's methanol. So what is the mechanics of this reaction? Which one do you expect in this reaction? So. So do you think this is the product that you can obtain? Makes sense for you, this product? What do you think, yes or no? Makes sense? Makes sense for you? Makes sense for you? 
What do you think? Makes sense, this product? You don't know, so? I think it makes sense because the methanol has the tank on the other side. And the yeah, so if this will be an SN2 reaction, it will, it will go uh, by, the, by the other side of the, new, of the living group, right? But that's not the product, of course. So I tell you now the product. is this one. So how is formed this product? You have already studied the two types of nucleophilic reaction, right? We're just concentrating the SN1 and the SN2. So how this product can be formed if this is not the product here? Can you think about the formation of a carbocation here? Yes, right, you can form this. You have seen already this when you study the SN1, right? So, right? So this can be formed. Now, what, what should happen now? Yeah? So the hydrogen, yeah, there is a shift of this hydrate, right, to this position. And why is that? So why is this? Why did that happen? Because it's more stable than the other one. Because yeah. the because the is? positive um, charge is on the, on the tertiary. Yeah. The so this carbocation now is more stable than this one. And that there is, that's the driving force for this uh, hydrate transfer, right? So, and now here can attack the, uh, the methanol as a nucleophile, okay? So, let's see some other before we continue. Um, so, if you think about, for example, the solvolysis of this uh, terbutyl chloride. And you think about So if you do the reaction in water acetone, this reaction, the rate of this solvolysis is actually much slower than if you do it in the 80, 20%. So you have, uh, in this is also water, and this is acetone. So anybody can explain why this reaction is now a sl a slower in this case? So why, why is that? Any idea? This is purely a solvent effect. Huh? This is just only has to be related to the solvent. So the more easy the, the carbocation that you can form is solvent by, by the solvent, the most easy is formed. So in this case, you have more water, OK? That means that the mixture system is more polar. Right? And being more polar means that this can solvate the potential carbocation here much easier. And if that happens, then this reaction can go faster because the carbocation is now stabilized. So it's just a pure solving effect. Okay? So, so what happened, for example, So is this a, a strong nucleophile, or is this a weak nucleophile? 
weak or strong? What do you think? Is this weak nucleophile? Is a very strong nucleophile? So any idea? This is a weak nucleophile. It's not a very strong nucleophile. So you have a very, a very a weak nucleophile, and you have a secondary substrate, right? So what is the product that you can form here? So think about the two, the two reactions that you have seen already. So So which of these two? Any suggestion? Do you think it will form this one? Or do you think it will form this one? Or do you think that maybe form both? Huh? Both. both. OK, you are using a weak nucleophile and a secondary substrate. OK, so that gives you a mixture of the two possible compounds. OK, so. Okay, we will see, let's, let's see now uh, some example or some typical reaction with different, uh, with different nucleophiles. So, formation of uh, alkyl ally from alcohol. Okay, so so if you have uh, if you treat a alcohol, uh, you treat an alkyl uh, ally. This is the allogen. Okay. With a alcohol, this suffer a nucleophilic substitution to give you the alkyl ally. Now, if I give you, uh, for example, this different ally, so which of this one? Do you see react uh, faster? So you have already studied the, you know, the electronegativity of the different atoms, the acidity, the acidity, right? So which one, based on that concept, which one of these do you think will react faster? Do you think this will react faster? Why? Mm -hmm. Any other opinion? Everybody thinks that is the answer? So this is more acidic, right? So the reactivity go in this parallel to the acidity, OK? Uh, so if you use, for example, methanol or primary alcohol, this usually go with, let's say, let's put like this. Sorry, primary alcohol. This usually go with SN2, okay? So if you use secondary or tertiary alcohol, this normally go with the SN1 mechanics. Okay, so secondary or tertiary alcohol go with the SN1 mechanics. Okay, so usually in this reaction, in the formation of alkyl ally, usually you need what is called an activator, okay, which is uh, 
uh, usually is a Lewis acid, which coordinate to the living group to facilitate the reaction. And this is actually, for example, an example is the use of zinc dichloride, okay, when you are making this SN2 reaction, and this zinc coordinate to the living group, making easier the reaction. This is indeed a, uh, the principle of a, rea a reagent, which is commercially available, which is known, uh, uh, which is called Lucas uh, reagent. So this reagent is a solution of synth dichloride and ACL concentrate. Okay, so and this reagent, if you have, for example, you know that you have an alcohol, for example but you don't know if this alcohol is primary, secondary, or tertiary. You can react that with this alcohol, with this uh, solution here. So, if, if the alcohol react with, this, with the chloride acid, you generate this chloride, alkyl chloride. And this, this is normally a clear solution, okay? And when you generate this, this became cloudy. So the, 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 the solution is not transparent anymore. It's now cloudy when you generate this. So if, if when you mix this, uh, this uh, solution with your alcohol, if you don't see any change in the, in the solution, if you see that everything is transparent, then it means that you have a primary alcohol, okay? But if the reaction time, if, if your mixture time cloudy very fast, when you just mix this with the alcohol, it means that you have a tertiary alcohol, okay? In which you generate this very stable carbocation here, tertiary carbocation, which is the most stable, right? So that means that any tertiary alcohol will react with this solution very fast and will generate this very fast, and this, give you this kind of uh, cloudy look in your solution, okay? This is the Lucas reagent that you can, uh, which is actually commercially available. Uh, so which other uh, nucleophile we can think about? So this is a, a, a typical reaction using this alcohol as a nucleophile. So there is also another, uh, another type of nucleophile. Which is the hydrate nucleophile. So have you heard any example in which the hydrogen can act as a nucleophile? Just the, this, just the hydrogen. So any example, do you know any reagent? A manos, yes. But, so this is actually the nucleophile species. So any any reactant that you can think about? I don't know if you have seen or no. Do you know what is this? Have you seen this? Yes. So why, where have you used this one to do what? I think you have made you have studied this already, right? Any idea? Don't remember? You remember that you have studied that, but you don't remember where? Okay. So, but you have studied for sure this one. So, you have studied in the, you have, me, you have studied already the radical, uh, the chapter related to radicals, right? And you use this one to reduce alkyl bromide, for example, right? So are you remembering now? Okay, so you have different type of, um, of this nucleophile as well. Usually this reaction is made in solvent like diethyl ether or THF. So this is your new group here. 
this is the theology. So now, when you use this, you have to be also carefully when you make the reaction because this can react very violently with water. So any idea what is the product of this with water? Have you seen that? Have you seen what is the what happened when you mix this lithium aluminum hydrate with water? No? Okay. So So when you react this with water, and this is important when you make the reaction that everything is dry and you don't have uh, water or moisture uh, from the ambient, because this can generate a caustic solution, which is corrosive, right? So you have to be careful of that, but also you generate hydrogen. So this is an exothermic reaction that also generates hydrogen. So if you want to neutralize, for example, lithium aluminum hydrate by adding Water, you have to do it very slowly, usually with sun ice to control this exothermicity, and slowly because you generate this uh, 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 hydrogen. Okay? So another group, uh, you, also, you have a lot of uh, uh, variation of this system, like for example, this sodium. This sodium borohydrate, which is also used, uh, you have used this one as well, right? When you study, have you seen this one, the sodium borohydrate? Okay, so that one is also another hydrogen nucleophile that you can use. Um, usually, the lithium aluminum hydrate, you use it to reduce the ester and the carbonyl compound, right? So, but in this case, you can also use it to reduce the alkyl halogen. Okay? So then you have also another one, which is the uh, the lungs or the organotin uh, hydrate. This one also gives you If you the reduction, so these two, the organotin and the sealants also are used to reduce this alkyl ally. Okay? So, um, So have you, have you studied also, so you have studied the competition between nucleophilic substitution, the, the SN1 and the SN2 reaction, right? So what is, when you have the SN2 reaction, what is, the, what is another reaction that could occur? Somebody already mentioned that before. What is the other reaction that can occur uh, in competency to this reaction? So imagine, for example, this one here. So there is another product if, if your nucleophile is very bulky, okay, and your group here are also bulky, there is another reaction that can happen here. Which one? So do you have any idea? What one? Elimination, Elimination reaction that will give you, for example, which one? So maybe, yeah? Any idea? So which could be the product there?
So this elimination reaction will give you this one, right? So to put you an example why that is so drastic. So if your nucleophile, imagine that this, you have your alcohol, and this R is, for example, This group here, okay, is a little bit bulky here. So this, when this group is a hydrogen, this is 90%, and this, the alkene, the alkene is only 10%. But just changing this hydrogen by a methyl group, then this is 50, 15, and this is 85%. So here you combine the steric effect of this group here close to the living group and, so sorry, this one here, and the steric effect of the nucleophile. So by playing with these two factors, then you can change the ratio of the two products. But this elimination reaction, the E2 elimination, is a reaction that you have to always keep in, uh, in mind as a potential side reaction, right? Okay, so I think what we can do uh, now is also try to, uh, I think it's a good idea that we summarize a little bit what we have seen today uh, and see if you can, if there is something that you, you did not catch. Um, so the SN2 reaction, okay? So we have seen that this is, a, this is called the bimolecular. So why is bimolecular? So we say that at the beginning, so why is, why is that? There's two molecules? Yeah, but I say that there is not only because there is two molecules. It's because there is two molecules that are involved in the determining step of the reaction, okay? So no, all the reactions that involve two molecules are SN2 reactions. So only those reactions where the two molecules are involved in the determining step of the reaction, okay? So the SN1 reaction also contains two molecules, right? And it's not an SN2, okay? So uh, the stereochemistry of the reaction usually go with what? Inversion or retention? So what do you think? Inversion or retention? What do you think, inversion or retention? You don't know? So we say that you have the living group here. And the, in the SN2 reaction, in the SN2 reaction, the nucleophile has to attack in the back side of the living group. What that mean, inversion or retention? Yeah, in most cases, uh, inversion. Inversion, yeah. exactly. So, except for the exception to the yes. So, but so we go now. So let's see. When you have two consecutive SN2 reaction, in that case you have retention, right? But in each of them you have an inversion, right? So to get these two consecutive SN2 reaction, what can you do? Either you use two different nucleophiles, right? Or you use a nucleophile, and then the second one, or let's say one of these two nucleophiles can be also the solvent, right? So, but the idea, the concept is that you do two consecutive SN2 to keep the configuration, okay? So what are the best solvent for the SN2 reaction? Polar or 
a protic or protic solvent. So do you think methanol is a good solvent for the SN2 reaction? No, why not? Because it can coordinate to the nucleophile as well by hydrogen bonding, right? So then the, 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 the best solvent are the polar non-protic solvent, like the THF diethyl ether. Okay? So um, So when we see the neighboring group participation, so that what can happen, we, so what is the importance of having a neighboring group that can interact with the center where you have the living group? So what was the effect that could happen? So can that change the stereochemistry of the reaction? Yes, right? Can also change the speed of the reaction? Yes, because you generate an intermediate which is much faster, uh, which is more reactive than the, than the original compound, right? So one typical example is this mustard uh, sulfur compound, okay? So you just think about this mustard gas, at least you may remember that one, okay? So, uh, So then I think the, the next day we will, um, we will see also other nucleophiles, which are mostly uh, carbon, amines, so nitrogen. So in this case, we have only seen hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, next day we will see also other nucleophiles like phosphorus, like uh, amine, uh, am some other uh, type of more uh, useful uh, a nucleophile in organic synthesis, okay? So I think I, I, we leave it here for today, okay?